praise the Lord. Anybody? Yeah. Come on, get on your feet. Come on, get on your feet. You can't praise him sitting down. Get on your feet. Come on. Let's give him a praise. Come on, give him a good praise tonight. Because he's worthy tonight. He's worthy of everything that you can give him tonight. Because he's he's a great God. He's a good God. He's done you nothing but good all the days of your life. Every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights tonight. Everything good in your life is a direct result of his goodness in your life. Can I get an amen from anybody? I said everything good in your life comes from God himself. Because all good things come from him. Amen. Let's invite him in tonight. Come on, let's go to the throne of God. Father, again tonight we're thankful for the privilege to be here. Again, we're thankful for the, for the privilege we have to come before you tonight. And to come in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as we come tonight... Again, we come on the merits of who He is because we have no merits to come before you with. But we come tonight knowing that your word assures us that Jesus is in the presence of God for each one of us right now, even as we speak. And we're thankful to know that He's there tonight as our advocate. He's there as our mediator, ever living to intercede tonight. To know that He's there as our high priest, as one that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And tonight, we come. We come in Jesus' name. And know that as we come tonight, we come on the authority of His name and in the power of His name. And knowing tonight that there are miracles still, still upon accomplished in that name, that name that is above every name. And tonight we just want to thank you and praise you for the privilege to get in this house tonight that we can come together as a body of believers, that we can come together to worship the living God. And truly you are a living God tonight. You're a great God and there's none like you in all the earth. You are marvelous in holiness and you are doing wonders tonight. You're just, you're just an awesome God and we give you praise tonight and we give you glory and honor tonight in this house because of who you are. You are the great God Jehovah. You are Jehovah Shammah, the Lord God that is there. You are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our Jehovah Shalom. You're the God of our peace tonight. You are our healer and our deliverer tonight. We, we just give you praise tonight and give you glory and honor this house here tonight. We come tonight Father. We come tonight with a spirit of expectation tonight believing that as we gather here you said where two or three would gather in your name that you would be among their midst and tonight we're just thankful to know that you'll be here we're thankful tonight to know that the Holy Spirit will be here and we just want to invite you to come. Holy Ghost, we need you tonight. You're our helper. Can't anything be done in this room tonight without you. Not a song can be sang, not a music can be played, not a word can be spoken tonight without the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon our lives tonight. So we invite you to come. We need you to come. We want you to come. We desperately need you to come in this meeting here tonight and begin to invade this place with your presence and your power. We need the miracle worker on the scene tonight. We need you in this room tonight. We need you to come and open the windows of heaven up and begin to move upon our lives here tonight. And when we leave this place tonight, I pray we'll not leave the same way that we came, but I pray we'll leave changed by the power of God. We've been challenged enough. We need to be changed. We need a change in our lives. And I pray that tonight will be the night that there'll be such a move of God in our lives tonight. There'll be such a move of the Holy Spirit that we will be change tonight in this very room. Every one of us in this room will not leave the same way that we came, but we will be changed in the power of the living God. So come Holy Spirit and do your work in this house here tonight and may everything that is done and everything that is said and every song that may be played and every word that is given, may it be done to glorify the name that is above every name. And at that name, the name of Jesus, every, every, every tongue is going to confess it Every knee is going to bow. And we're thankful tonight and grateful for that name tonight. So come, we get Holy Spirit, do what needs to be done here tonight. And we will give you praise and we will give you glory. And we ask it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give him one more good praise tonight, would you? One more hand clap of praise tonight. Come on. Give him a praise and kind of your family tonight. Come on. Somebody ought to give him an audible praise here tonight. Just to praise the Lord. Just a hallelujah. Or just thank you, Jesus. Anything to give him glory tonight. Come on. We're going to worship him tonight. Come on. Let's go, brother. Build our idols just to see them fall. And our false gods brought us nothing at all. Oh, how foolish we have been. Forgive us of our sins. 
You've been trying to fill the same old holes inside. Oh, there's a better light. Yes. There's a better light. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom, saving. He's a prison shaking savior. He's a chain breaker Cross 
search for the light of day and the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. We've got pain. He's a chain breaker. You believe it. You receive it. You can feel it. Somebody take fire. You believe it. Oh, 
to the Holy of Holies. And we want to see His face so bad. Lord, you know, we go in the Spirit, in my Spirit, Lord. Take my hand. Lead me in. Take me past the outer court into the holy By the crowds of people, priests to sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for righteousness, it's only found one place. Take me in to the holy of holies, take me in by the blood, blood of the Take me past the outer court Into the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I long to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people Those priests to sing your praise I hunger and thirst for righteousness and it's only found one place Take me in to the holy of holies Lord, take me in by the blood, blood of the Lamb Lord, take me in to the holy of holies Take the cold Touch my lips, here I am. Lord, take the coals, cleanse my lips, here I am. Lord, take the coals, cleanse my lips, here I am. Just holding your 
we come into a meeting if we don't see him high and lifted up if we've missed it if we don't see him high and lifted up even in the offering we've missed it if we don't see him high and lifted up even in the worship we've, we've missed it we, if we don't see him high and lifted up in the preaching we've we've missed it We've missed the gathering. We've missed the purpose. We've missed what we need to see. We, we need to see Him high and, and lift it up. Isaiah had an outward vision. And because of the outward vision, Isaiah now was ready for an inward experience. Because Isaiah, once he saw the holiness of God, he began to realize how unclean he really was. And he said, I dwell among a people that's unclean. And I am a man of unclean lips myself. And the scripture says that the angel of the Lord took the coals from off the fire and touched his lips. Isaiah had an inward experience because of an outward vision of the holiness of God. And something began to happen on the inside of Isaiah. When he saw the holiness of God and saw how unclean he really was. It was at that moment that the sanctifying fire of God began to move. Upon a man who had been preaching for years. Six chapters before that he was preaching. Yet he was preaching as an unsanctified man that needed that fire of God to touch his life and, and to have that inward experience on the inside of him that began to cleanse the uncleanness in his life. <laughs> and the rest of that message is after he had the upper vision and he had the inward experience, now he was ready for the outward call. He then ready for the outward call. He said, Whom shall I see? And Isaiah said, Here am I. See me. <laughs> wow. If we can only if we can only get that in our spirit, what we're seeing here tonight in this song. If we could really, 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 really mean this with all of our being. Take me into that place where Isaiah entered in and let me experience the sanctifying fires of the living God and then I will have that inward experience that will qualify me for my outward call of God. See, we're wanting the outward call of God without the inward experience. It won't work. It just won't work. You can't, you can't, you can't call. You can't go. You can't go until you... See, I... I come out of a Nazarene denomination. They preach one thing very strongly, and it's what we call entire sanctification, a definite second works of grace. It's a, it is as real as your first works of grace, which is salvation. It's real. I've told you this a hundred times, too. I can take you within two inches of the Sunday morning, like I got saved. On the left side of that altar, I can take you to the right side of that altar within two inches of where God sanctified me holy on a Thursday night. The fire of God began to burn. It's real. What Isaiah experienced was real. And it's still real today. Sabrina talked about the preacher that said that's old covenant. <laughs> Thank God it's old covenant, man, but it's still good for today. It's still good for today. He's still sanctifying His people. He's still touching the people's lips and sanctifying the people. He's still getting ready for His work. For the hour call God will go live. Can you just sing this one more time? Just a little bit of it. We're going to change the world service. Give me just a little bit more. And we sing this one more time. Just a little bit of it. Come on. Come on. Take me past the outer court. I want to go a little bit farther. Do you? To the holy I want to go a little bit deeper in this thing.
say to you? You want to go where you've never been before? You want to go into the presence of God? You really, you really want to go where you've never been before? And you'll have to do what, you, what you've never done. If you keep doing the same thing, you'll get the same result. Wow. A hunger and thirst. There it is, right there. there. And it's only found in one place. Take me in. Into the holy of holiness. And you can go there. Because of the blood. You have a blood called right to get into that place. Take me in. Oh, take the cold. And touch my lips. Do it, Holy Spirit. Take the cold. Wow. Oh. Cleanse my lips. Here, Here I am. am. Here I am. Lord, take the cold. Cleanse my lips. Here I am. figured out years ago that's just what it's got to be. That's what it's got to be. What it's got to be. But we are cave dwellers. Again, we are cave dwellers. We talked about that the other day. We are cave dwellers. Yeah. We are. No place I'd rather be than locked up in a cave with God's chosen people. Most unlike the people that God sent to David in that cave, they was in debt, they was discouraged, they were depressed, they wasn't one of them. You could, you, 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 they wasn't one of them worth a nickel. But they came by the hundreds in that cave. Four hundred outcast people that wasn't worth a blood nickel. Turned them into the mighty men, mighty men, mighty warriors of David. God turned them around. Wow. Or tell who you run into a cave. I've, I've been around long enough to know that uh, you ain't in a cave alone. You ain't in it alone. Amen. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, we, we're not going to dismiss going upstairs tonight, so if you've got your kids, why, hold them with you. Set them down right where you can watch them, because we're going to keep everybody up here tonight. This man got, got a word tonight, I don't want anybody to miss it, okay? So just stay put, and we're going we're gonna to give away this word of God. I just got to look at you, prophet, I can't help it, man. <laughs> I love you, boy. Love you like a daddy, but I know I look older than you. Know, but before you get up here, I, I need to tell you that that woman sure cleans you up good. Okay. Put your hands together, folks. Well, this man is up here. see everybody tonight. It's different tonight, right? It's different. That's good. That's good because we have a tendency to get hooked into the sameness. Just doing the same thing in the same way, this same time, sitting in the same place. Come on, church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Before I get into the message tonight, I, I'm, I'm going to do something uh, a little different. How many of you that's been here, and I don't want you, you're not doing this for from, from, from my, from my benefit, but how many of you have really feel like you have heard from God? I see your hands. I mean, you received something that that touched your heart and changed your life. I want to see your hand. I mean, really, seriously. Praise God. And I don't ask for my benefit, but I just want you to confess it. Anytime that God does a work in our heart and life, we need to confess it. And sometimes because we don't confess what God has done, we lose it. We lose it sometimes before we get in the parking lot. We need to confess it. And I, I just wanted you to acknowledge the fact that God has done a work in your life. Amen. And, and, and no, matter, no matter what anybody thinks, I believe personally that this already has been successful. Sure, I, I, you know, it would have been great if we could have seen the house filled. But, but I, you know what? After 43 years of doing this, I can tell you it's not in the numbers. It's not in the quantity. It's in the quality. Amen. Some lives have been changed. Sister, I want you to stand. Yes. Sister Tabitha, I'm on Facebook with her. And i got to tell this. She wrote something on there today, and it really touched my heart. It touched my wife's heart, too. And I wanted to bring attention to it, because it had to do with the message last night. Because before we left here, I told you that there was a people that need you. And she began to she began on, on Facebook to talk about where she had been at the nursing home painting nails for the little ladies in the nursing home. And she talked about how they all had a story and how blessed that she was to listen and hear their story. And I wrote to her and told her, You have a story. And you found the people that needed you. Amen. And I'm going to be honest with you, sister. I could, when I read what you wrote, I could see it. And I could see you there in the nursing home holding those little, those little hands and listening to them. And just and them and them just knowing that you cared about them and that you loved them. That's why you were there. 
And I just wanted to acknowledge you tonight. And I want you to know that everybody in here, you should have heard the word last night because there is a people that need you. And she found the people that need her in the nursing home and she made a difference in their lives. Can somebody give the Lord some praise in this house? That's a message illustrated. You want an illustrated message? That is one. Huh? I just, it just touched my heart when she said they all have a story. And I thought, you have one too, darling. You have a story and you're telling it. And how it touched her heart. Praise God. Got a word for us tonight. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. There's more. I love telling people this. I, I mean, I got to be honest with you. Just about everywhere I go, if I don't preach a message on there is more, I, I can't leave without telling you that there's more. And there's always more. You haven't seen it all yet. There's more to there's more for you to see and experience in the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I don't know about you, but man, that makes me hungry. Amen. It makes me hungry. In the Gospel of John in the first chapter and the 43rd verse. Actually, it's 40 through. 43 through 50. Or 47, I'm sorry. Verse 47. I ought to put my glasses on, I guess. Praise God. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Wow. Man, that's a... And that's not the message, but boy, there's a powerful message there, isn't there? For Jesus to look at Nathaniel and say, Here is a guy that there's no deceit in him. There's no lie in him. Wow. Praise God. I mean, don't you want God to say that about you? To be able to point his finger at you and say, There's a man, there's a woman, that there is no deceit in them. They are who they say they are. They're in a right relationship with me. They're my child. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, what a mouthful, right? Thank you, Jesus. Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? Wow, that's that's loaded, ain't it? How did you how did you know me? Up until now, Nathaniel don't know who he's talking to. Because in reality, God knew him before he was ever in his mother's womb. But up until this point, he don't really realize that he's talking to the Son of the living God. Who told you that? How'd you know that about me? Do you understand that there isn't anything hidden from Him? From the beginning to the end of your life? I mean, I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? When we stop and think about it. Everything. Everything that we'll already do is already cataloged. He already knew it. And He still loved us. That's the amazing part, isn't it? Hallelujah. He still loves us. Praise God. <laughs> he said, Wow, how'd you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. It was a word of knowledge. It was a word of knowledge. And Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered 
and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Wow. My. Praise God. How many times have you read that? Sometimes we just need somebody to come along and speak it to us. You're going to seek. You think this was something? I mean, I speak a word of knowledge over you. That I, I saw you under the fig tree. I, I already knew you. And I, and I know, I already know where you're at. And because of that. Because of that, you're going to believe that I am the Son of God. Jesus, the greatest teacher ever. He inspires his pupil with the promise, you will see greater things than these. Man, Jesus knew how to stir their hearts, didn't he? I mean, if I was going, if I was going to get somebody to follow me, and they were interested in following me, I mean... Wow, and that's something to tell them. Listen, if you'll follow me, you're going to see greater things than these. What a promise. And if you do know that these promises are to you and I. I mean, we've got to lay hold of this word. You've got to make this personal. I'm not preaching, preaching to empty seats. I'm talking to you. Jesus is talking to you tonight. And I'm sure that many of you have seen and experienced great things, mighty things. How many of you? How many of you uh, have seen miracles? And sure, you've seen you've seen God move. Some of you have experienced those miracles and healings in your own lives. Amen. Huh? Amen. But there's greater things yet for you to see. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to boast. I'm not trying to make myself some kind of super spiritual Christian. But i got to tell you, man, I've seen some stuff. Man, I've been with him in the cave. Hallelujah. I've been with him in the secret place. Hallelujah. I've been in the holy place with him. But only to know that there's even greater things yet that I'm going to see and experience. Yeah. Kind of getting ahead of myself, but but this today when I was praying over this message and I I got to thinking about Jesus come walking to the disciples on the water. Nobody had ever walked on the water before. Right? Nobody had ever done that. Woo, Jesus, can you imagine that? My God, can you imagine that? Come on, get with me. I mean you I mean, you're in, and it's a storm going on. And they look out there, and there comes Jesus walking on the water. Wow. My God. That was awesome, right? That was awesome. But there's something even more awesome than that. There's a, there's a fisherman in the boat by the name of Peter. <laughs> Woo! My Lord. You know, I mean, the disciples ain't quite got over the fact that Jesus is walking on the water. And now Peter has just got out of the boat. And now Peter's walking on the water. Woo! Come on, somebody. I, I, I got to tell you, I got excited sitting there today in the hotel room. And I said, I want to walk on water. Come on, church. Woo! Jesus. I know some of you just right, you said it. You said, yeah, God heard you. I didn't hear, but well, I know what you said. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Call me crazy if you want to. But why not? Right. Why not? Yeah. Well, God, we, we don't need to do those things anymore. Yeah, okay. You, you keep believing that. <laughs> Praise God. People that don't believe in miracles do not have a problem proven that they don't believe in miracles. Amen. Right? Because you got to believe if you're going to have a miracle in your life. Don't you love it how the doctors and the hospitals claim to be miracle workers? 
They do those advertisements on television. Come to our hospital. We're miracle workers. And I think, really? There's only one miracle worker. His name is Jesus. No matter what goes on in that hospital, I'm going to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Wow. It's just amazing. From glory to glory. Never going back, but always going forward. Never diminishing, but always increasing. He is always revealing Himself in greater ways to those who hunger for more. Do you know what part of this, part of what the Great Awakening is about? It's awakening professing Christians out of their spiritual slumber because we just get stuck. In fact, maybe that would be the title of the message tonight. If you're stuck, you need to get unstuck. Yeah. And sometimes we just get stuck. And we believe this is it. And it, ain't, it can't get any better than this. This is, this is as good as it's going to get. Well, I got news for you. Jesus said greater things than these. Whew. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but... Even what we have seen in the last two or three days, man, ain't nothing to what God can do in this house. Ain't nothing to what God can do in our lives. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And you know what? I don't want to end up here in a few days and, and y'all go, well, we, we had a good few night services and, and then you just go back to being like you were. Come on, church. Revival means to live again. True heaven sent revival means change. It's about changing our hearts and the way we think and the way we see things. And the, oh Jesus, and the way we talk, the way we live. Praise His name tonight. Hallelujah. Mm. There is always more for those who want more. But sometimes we just get satisfied. With where we're at. Huh? And we don't really believe that there, there could be any more. I was raised. Now if anybody takes offense at this, you'll just have to get over it. <laughs> but I was raised with a Baptist background. And I love Baptist, the Baptist. And this is, and this is in no way, uh, you know, in any negative thing against them. But you know what? My papa was a fiery preacher. Hellfire and brimstone. But you know what? He lived right. He preached holiness because he lived holy. He really did. He was a holiness preacher. And you know what? From the time I got saved, I knew that there was something else. I've always been that way. From the very beginning of my walk with God, I would say, Lord, Oh, Jesus. Now, you all, most of you know my testimony. I'm an ex drug addict, ex alcoholic, facing 20 years in a penitentiary for armed robbery. Okay? So when I get saved, I know I'm saved. Most all of Ohio and Kentucky know I'm saved. All the, all the, all the police departments know I'm saved. Even the county jail knew I got saved. Are you listening to me? And most of all, I knew I was saved. Woo, Jesus. What no doubt in, in my mind. And anybody that knew me. Woo, they knew I saved. Oh, come on, somebody help me. But you know what? There was something stirring down on the inside of me. It said there's more. There's more. I believe there's something else to this. And like you, never been taught. Nobody ever told me anything about being sanctified, but I had a bad habit that I was still hanging on to. <laughs> and down in my basement, on the floor, spread out, I said, okay, I don't know nothing about the doctrine of sanctification. But I said, all right, here's the deal. I'm saved, but I need something else. Come on, somebody. 
I need, I need something else, God. I just, this is the picture I had. This is what I saw. This, this thing in my life, this terrible habit that I had. I took out that little pack of cigarettes. I held up one of them and I looked at that thing and I said, my God, I talked to it. You're crazy. Well, we already, we already established that. <laughs> and I'm talking to the cigarette. And I'm saying, you ain't bigger than my God. And, and, and you ain't going to do this to me no more. And then I, I laid out on the floor and I said, here and right now, I nail this to the cross. I crucify this flesh. Woo! And whatever it takes, I want to be free. Woo! Jesus, my God. Hallelujah. Guess what? He set me free. Didn't have nobody to pray for me. Didn't have nobody to talk to. Because everybody I knew that were Christians, most of them were doing the same thing I was doing. Are you with me? But what I found out, there was something more. There was something more. And then, wow. I went back to the church and she, she, I, I took her to the place where I held my first revival. Three weeks. I said three weeks. I've been preaching a year. I preached three weeks. Only preached three messages. <laughs> you know the messages. Get right with God. Get right with God. And then the third one was get right with God. <laughs> and, and about a hundred people got right with God during those three weeks. <laughs> but you know, a friend of mine, uh, that her and her husband, we got all got saved about the same time. And, she heard me preach after this experience that I'd had. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> we stopped at her house to have coffee, and she kept pointing her finger at me and, 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 and smoking her cigarette. And she kept talking to me. And she said, there was something different about you tonight when you was preaching. She said, something happened to you, haven't they? Where? She said, you shouted while you preached. And she said, I never heard you shout before. And I said, well, you know, and since you asked me, I'll just go ahead and tell you. God done something in my life, and he put a shout in me. Amen. Woo, Jesus. I'm not here to condemn you. And it's not about, it's not about you smoking or your cigarettes. I'm just sharing with you about my life. There was more. And I kept saying there was more. I just knew that there was more. I, I read this verse of scripture. And, and it just I just I just couldn't couldn't you really say that there, I see greater things than these. And man, I didn't think it could get any greater than getting saved. But then God sanctified me. <laughs> Cleaned me up, man. Amen. Help me get rid of those things that I was dealing with. But there was still this, this hunger in my heart. And I, I went to Crystal River, Florida, and I started a church. And it was Christian Fellowship Baptist Church. <laughs> Packed it out, son. I mean, it was wall to wall. I mean, packed it out. And then on a Sunday night, three months later, standing in my pulpit, I found out what more was. He baptized me in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Woo! My God. And can I tell you, as I stood there that night and looked at those people, and I'm saying to God, if I tell them that this happened to me, they're all going to leave. But I did anyway. And half of them left. And we started our church over. I'm making a point. But what I discovered is that there's always more. If you want more, there's always more of God. There's always things that we have not seen. Please, whatever you do, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck where you're at. <coughs> Some churches get stuck in their traditions. 
Amen. I go, I've been to hundreds of churches in 43 years. And I can tell you some of them are stuck in their traditions. They're stuck. And they wouldn't know a move of God if it happened. Because they're so stuck. So they're so convinced that if God doesn't do it like this. If he don't do it like we've always done it. It can't possibly be God. And then God sends somebody like me. Now, of course, there's a lot of those churches I haven't ever got back to. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of them. It's just one time. Just, I mean, you can call me a one-time prophet. <laughs> Listen, you got to get this tonight. I'm sure the disciples were inspired to expect more. A man that you don't know tells you things about yourself that no one could have known except God. And then he tells you you haven't seen anything yet. Wow. Greater things than these. I don't know what you saw and I don't know what you've experienced. I just know that there's greater things I live with this expectation. I could not preach this message in good conscience if I, had, if I didn't practice this myself. But I live with the expectation. I'm going to see more. I'm going to see more. I'm going to see some things I haven't seen yet. I live with that. My wife will tell you that we both, we live our lives with that expectation. Last, last year, a, week, a year ago, this past August, I went into a little country church with about 40 people. 35, 30, about 30, 35 people, I guess, at the time. In a town in southern Indiana. The uh, population of the town was 800 people. I went there for three, for three services. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I was there for 16 weeks. And I got to tell you, I honestly experienced things that I had never experienced before in my ministry. I mean, and there was times that I stood in awe that I couldn't even preach. I just stood in awe at the power of God and the glory of God, what He can do. You got to get this church. You gotta wake up, you gotta know that there's more. There's more than what you've already experienced. There's more than what you've already seen. But you gotta want it. You gotta you gotta desire it. You got to be hungry for it. Hallelujah. Trouble is some of you. For some of you, it's not about revival, it's survival. You're in your survival mode. And you've been that way for years. You're just surviving. Oh, and God has got so much more for you. Wow, man. He's got so much more for you. But you're in a box. I love you. But you're in a box. And God wants to get you out of the box. Oh, hallelujah. No, you're in a box. God wants to set you free. Woo, hallelujah. You got all this stuff in you. Jesus. It needs to be used for the glory of God. And you're stuck. God wants to unstick you. Hallelujah. Woo, he wants to show you things that you ain't ever seen. Glory. Praise his holy name. Glory to God. And you've got to believe that your future is going to be better than your past. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, because God's got a new beginning for you tonight. See, you just didn't happen in here this evening. See, this is my divine appointment and you need to hear what I'm saying. I'm telling you there's greater things for you to experience. Woo, hallelujah. You ain't been living. you just been existing. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Oh, what God wants to... Would y'all just reach your hands this way? Well, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Woo, this is your day. Woo, 
glory to God. This is your day, darling. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo, Jesus, my God. Woo, hallelujah. Going to step out of your past and into the future that God has prepared for you. Going to see things, going to experience things that you couldn't even imagine. My God, somebody help me in this house. Woo. I don't want to be stuck and I don't want to be in a rut. I want to be open to God and whatever God wants. Come on, church. Ooh, hallelujah. I got to tell this story. You've probably heard me say this before, but the older I get, the more stories I tell. But that revival, that outpouring that took place in Indiana, I ain't done with you. Pastor told me a couple of weeks into the meeting, he met with me and he said, he just a, this was his first church to pastor. I've only been pastor in about three years. He said, he said, the week before you came, he said, I knew something was going to happen. He said, I come over to the church about midnight on a Friday night to just get in there and pray. He said, when I got there, I come in the front door and I usually go in the side door. He said, I come in the front door and he said, I heard somebody. No lights on in the church. He said, I heard somebody. And they were praying. And he said, I moved up a little closer. And there was an 84-year-old woman that had been in the church for 80 years that had resisted everything that he had done, fought him on every turn for two and a half years. She'd been in the church for 80 years, had been taught wrong, had been showed wrong things. But he walked in there that night and he said, I got up and I could hear her praying. And said she was crying out to God, forgive me, Jesus. I've been wrong. God sent revival to this house. I'm going to apologize to my pastor because I've been wrong. And I want you to know my God revival broke out. My God, he opened the heaven and began to pour out his Holy Ghost. My God, we got to get right with God. That outpouring hinged on that 84-year-old woman. Wow. Hallelujah. Night after night, I would listen to this young pastor say to me, I've never seen anything like this. And we'd come back the next night and he would say, I've never seen nothing like this. I mean, night after night after night, he would come back and people were saying, we've never seen nothing like this. Are you listening to me? Do you understand what you're sitting on? You're sitting on the possibility of the greatest move of God that you've ever experienced. But you've got to believe it. You can't make conditions with God. He don't do this on your timetable. He don't do it for your convenience. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you. Oh God. If I don't leave you with anything else. I, I want to leave you with an expectancy. see greater things than I've seen. And I can experience greater things than I've ever experienced. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs and wonders, seeing things that we've never saw before. Experiencing things. Now, I've seen some mighty moves of God. But I saw people Come into a service. And listen. Listen to this. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen to this. They didn't even have a worship team. 
He bought two TVs and put them up on the wall for screens. And they were, his wife was doing the best she could, and they were worshiping to the music from YouTube. Are you listening to me? I mean, because I just want to let everybody know it's not about you. It's about Him. Oh, I stood there. And i got to be honest with you. I'm thinking, we're going to have revival. And they're only having a worship team. Huh? They only have a worship team. And they're doing this. And people are coming in that night. And they're dropping like flies. Pow, pow, pow. And before I know it, there's 50 or 60 people laid out on their faces. Ain't nobody preached. Ain't nobody sung anything except YouTube. Come on, church. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. They didn't have nothing but YouTube. Can somebody say thank God for YouTube? Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. But listen, I talk. He calls me once a week. He still calls me. I'm a, I, he's made me a father. And, and, and he still calls me. And he lets me know what's going on. And, and, and in the last year, they fed over 3,000 people because out of that revival, he started an outreach and began to feed the community. Are you listening to me? And they had two young people coming to the church when we started that revival. And in about six weeks, they were running 30 or 40 kids and they were coming to that revival. Are you listening to me? 40 or 50 pastors passed through that place in 16 weeks. Wow. Why are you telling us all this? Because we can see greater things than that. You can. You can. I just don't know what you want. I just don't know how hungry you are. And I thought, I talked to him the other day. I said, how are you doing? He said, man, I need to talk to you. He said, I'm running 65 or 70 people now, and I need to talk to you. When we started, it was 30. They gave the year before. I want to show you what God can do, but then he can do greater. The year before the revival, they gave, it's an assembly of God's church, and they gave $10,000 to missions. In the year of the revival, they gave $30,000 to missions. Wow. Hallelujah. And they took good care of me too. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, there's greater things than these. The only reason I'm sharing is it just really happens. What do you want? Do you just want church as usual? I mean, is that good for you? It's not good for me. I can't do church. Hallelujah. I just can't do church. I just can't sing two songs and let's go home. I was raised in a church where they, they sang out of the Red Song book. Anybody ever sing out of the Red Song book or may have been blue? It's the same book, just different color. And all them verses had five. And they only sang two. The first and the last. And I go, wonder what's wrong with the rest of the verses. <laughs> I mean, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That's the only verse I knew. Are you with me? I mean, we're stuck. You've got to get unstuck. You've got to want this thing. You think I brought it? I didn't bring it. If anyone had anything to do with that outpouring, and I like to call them outpourings, if, I, if, if there was anyone had anything to do with that outpouring in Clay City, Indiana, it was a little 84-year-old woman, about, about 80, about, weighed about 90 pounds, laying on the floor, crying out to God, asking for forgiveness. Don't think it can't happen, Bill. Don't think it can't happen, brother, because it can't happen. But you got to want it. Now, I'm, I'm already here, so I'm going to stay here for a minute, okay? Everybody listen really close to me. 
Revival isn't about you. Revival does not belong to a local church or a denomination. Revival belongs to the kingdom of God. It, it isn't revival for this church. If that's all you see, you're going to miss it. Because God wants to do a revival in this whole region. And that's what He's doing. You see, there was never more on any given night, there was never more than 20, 25 of his own people. But the church packed out night after night because people in the region were driving 50 and 60 miles. We was in a, we was in a meeting and these two ladies, I, they were, they, they come up for prayer. And, uh, and I, I don't know, I don't remember why. I asked him, I said, are you all from around here? And she said, no, we're from Alabama. I said, you're from Alabama? So I said, what in the world are you doing all the way up here? And she said, you're having revival. Oh, I said, I'm sorry. She just put me in my blood. Well, you're having revival. Are you listening to me? What God wants to do in these last days is he wants a church that will host it. Do you understand that this church can host it? And we need to pray for the pastors to catch the vision. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you this. I, I don't have an exact number, but it was over 50 pastors, ministers. Some of them burn up, burn out, got restored. Some of them were pastoring. But I'm going now to some of those churches. And some of those churches are being blessed. Because some of those pastors came. Amen. And they understood what God was doing. And that it wasn't, it wasn't about Clay City, Indiana. It was about an entire region. I live in Indianapolis, which was 75 miles away. People were driving from Illinois and coming into that place. Do you understand how hungry there are people are for God? If you're not hungry for God, there are some people out there that are hungry for God. What y'all want? I'm sorry. I was supposed to be preaching another message. Hallelujah. Do you do you believe that there's more? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm a revivalist. I live it, I eat it, I sleep it, because I believe for such a time as this, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, to speak into the body of Christ. Revival is the only hope for this nation and for the body of Christ. Now I want to say this again to you in case you didn't hear it before. Revival has an inner power of its own. Revival is spiritual warfare at its best. Revival is not having a few night services. Revival has to come down from God. And it's about change. It's not just about changing. In, in Grace in Kentucky, in 2005 or 2004, I went into a church in Grayson, Kentucky, population 3,500. If you've ever traveled very far down Interstate 64, you went through Grayson. It's on the other side of Ashland, Kentucky. I went there with a, as a friend to rest, to rest. And uh, one of the pastors heard I was there and said, would you please come? Would you please come and preach on Sunday morning? I went there because I was wore out. I went there and my friend brought me there to rest. And I said, yeah, because I can't turn nobody down. So I did. Four months later, we left. Amen. Something happened. God released a river into this place. Am I implying that, 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 that this is what's going to happen here tonight? I wish I could. I wish it would happen here. I'd like to see you experience the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. For God to just to release a river. For God just to release His presence in this house. 
But what happened was, we had people flying in from out of state. All there were churches all over Grayson, Kentucky. The Baptists came. Are you listening to me? The Baptists came, and the Methodists came, and the Presbyterians came, and they shut, they shut their church doors on Sunday night, and they come to join us. You see, I've been there, but I'm believing for greater things than these. I'm, I'm believing for greater things than I've already experienced and that I've already seen. I believe God can do it anywhere where there's hungry people. Hungry people. Hungry people that want more of God. And we can't be selfish about it. Can't be selfish about it. Hallelujah. Greater things than these. Hallelujah. Mm. The only thing that can stop us is doubt and unbelief. The only thing that keep, can keep us from seeing greater things. In this next chapter, Jesus performs his first public miracle. He turns the water into wine. And it was just the beginning of his miracle ministry. Mm. There was so much more to come. And I want to say to you, there is so much more to come. In these latter days, God is pouring out His Holy Spirit. Outpourings are taking place all over this nation, like I just described to you. And around the world, this is happening. God is moving in a mighty way across the world and across this nation. And whether you have seen it or not, He's doing it. But He's doing it where people are hungry and where they desire it and where they want it. The move of God is on. And here's what He has put in my heart. That we're going to see greater things in these latter days than we have seen in all the previous years since Jesus was here. I believe that now is the time that we're going to see the dead resurrected. Hallelujah. Like never before. We hear that from time to time, don't we? I, 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 have an, I, have a, I have a testimony of a resurrection in my own ministry. Church I was pastoring in Florida, a man died on a Wednesday night sitting on, on the church pew. And a lady in the church, who, her and her husband had helped me start the church, was a nurse. And she went to Sam. He just slumped over in his seat. And she had watched him and went over, put her hand on him and had no pulse. And she looked at me and she said, he's gone. And you know what my response was? Ain't nobody dying in my church. Amen. And you know what? This country preacher was about to see something he had never seen before. And it wasn't because of my prayer, but the church gathered around him. And we rebuked the spirit of death. Woo! And actually believed it. He opened up his eyes and lived for another 20 years. Come on, Jesus. Come on, give him some praise. But we're going to see greater things than these in these last days. But you've got to believe it. Hallelujah. This baby here tonight that's got the hole in her heart, I'm claiming it healed. Yes. No, I'm talking to you. Listen to me. I'm telling you enough's enough. Come on, church. Yes. We're going to believe God's going to give this baby a creative miracle. Yes. Come on, church.
But I can tell you that the disciples come to see greater things. But only be a, a little while down that dusty road so they would witness him open the blinded eyes of Bartimaeus. And they would see him speak to ten lepers. And watch God heal them. And with each passing day, they saw greater things. Do you think that's over? Now, you know, I, I know somebody could come to me tonight and say, well, I, I've seen all this that you, you've seen. Well, I'm glad you have. Praise God. But for me, I've just in the last year, I've witnessed some things that I never saw before. I saw God move in ways I never saw Him move. I saw Him bring people to an old ways that would absolutely just boggle the mind. Now I know to much of the church world this is foolishness. Now and a lot of them, I'll be honest with you, a lot of churches don't really are not really, they're not going to call me. Because they don't really, they're not interested in the Bible. They don't want the glory of God because He's already Pastor's already told you. When the glory of God shows up, it exposes us. It reveals to us how horrible sin is. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus. Would you come down here and join me tonight? I don't know what I'm going to do. Come on. We're going to let the Holy Ghost lead us. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on down. I want to talk to you. Come here. Come on, come on down here. I'm going to leave you.